Uh, welcome to another uh, COIL at Purchase conversation. I'm Dr. Keith Landa, Director of the Teaching Learning Technology Center here at Purchase College. Hello, I'm Elizabeth Pearson, the Education Abroad Coordinator in the Office for Global Education. And we're here with Dr. Crystal Perkins, the Associate Professor of Psychology in the Psychology Department at Purchase College in the School of Natural and Social Sciences. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Perkins. So I'll start us off with our first question. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, who you are and, and what you teach uh, at, at Purchase? Yeah, uh, so first, as always, thank you for having me and inviting me uh, to this uh, Zoom event. Um, as you said, I'm an associate professor of psychology here at Purchase, and I also am a contributing faculty member in the interdisciplinary program, Global Black Studies. Um, so my main kind of wheelhouse courses are, uh, I'm a social psychologist by training, so cross-cultural psychology, which is the COIL class, or the class that I COILed. Uh, I also teach the psychology of stereotyping, prejudice, and discrimination, social cognition, um, research methods to senior seminar, and then when um, I have opportunities, a qualitative methods course. Thanks. So, so Crystal, can you tell us a little bit more about the course that you uh, added uh, the core collaboration to? Uh, how did you decide to get involved? And what were you trying to do with adding COIL to, to this course? Yeah, thank you. So I got involved because of you, Keith. <laughs> um, uh, five years ago, yeah, um, Keith, you sent an email beginning of the semester saying, hey, well, look at this. And, you know, typically at that time, it's the beginning of a, the, the fall semester, people have their courses nearly prepped or are um, scrambling. <laughs> I was doing a combination of those two things, but not wanting to do any major overhaul but it was just too um, tempting to pass up. So um, one of the sort of values embedded in COIL is cultural immersion, is, is sort of cultural literacy, is, is uh, experiencing um, a culture, a cultural world that, that one is unfamiliar with and having that experiencing experience being embedded in uh, your course and my cross-cultural psychology class did all of those things and and I wanted every time I taught that course wanted more ways to um, uh, for students to see the world to experience the world so it just for me was just a natural extension of what I was doing in my course. Um, um, so it's something that I just couldn't, I couldn't not do really. It, it might also be uh, interesting to know a little bit about what course you partnered with on the other, on the other side. Yeah, so I think um, new people to COIL, often want to coil in a discipline of your own. So I think everyone sort of felt this way that they wanted to find, like me, just a professor in another country that was a psychology professor. Um, that seemed sort of the easiest and made the most sense. But as I learned sort of through the training, um, that, that it doesn't always have to be that way. And sort of learning, um, students can learn sort of across, across cultures and across disciplines in really deep ways through COIL. So I ended up COILing with a professor of economics, actually, um, at the University of Sonora in the uh, northern Mexico. Um, and it ended up being really great, a really great experience, a really great partnership. That's wonderful. 
Yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit about what you felt were some of the benefits of the COIL course for your students? And you, you set out some with some goals and, and were you able to achieve those into the students' benefit? Yeah. Uh, so several goals. Um, so the sort of main goal of that class, the cross-cultural psychology class, is to sort of revisit sort of taken for granted theories and ideas in, psycho in psychology and what they mean if we um, take into consideration the majority of the world. Um, and to similarly not see the majority of the world doing sort of things different than sort of US Americans, but to sort of see the diversity of uh, psychological life and to get students to move away from comparing themselves or sort of to the American sort of psychology to the rest of the world. I wanted sort of students to get away from that. And, and the COIL course, um, the COIL experience, I think, was a way of uh, for students to practice that. So I don't think it's necessarily one thing that gets done for students to sort of shape their perspective in that way, but it's something that takes practice. Similarly, if I can say, uh, I COILed my course around the time when there was sort of intense sort of anti-Mexican rhetoric going on. And it was really important for me and my class to take that on, okay, and meet, meet, meet Mexican students. Um, and I actually remember uh, my students actually during our first I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry, synchronous meeting, um, actually being sort of quite apologetic to the students in Mexico um, and being, I would say, the most nervous about sort of what, um, what the rhetoric might mean in their encounters with the students, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's great. So uh, you talked about what your students got out of it, but how about you as, an, as a faculty member, as an instructor? I mean, what did you get out of it? Did it uh, change your teaching in any way, not only for this course, but maybe for other courses? Oh, yeah. Um, in, in many, many ways. It, <laughs> it was a lot of it was a lot of work. Um, I, I've always uh, valued um, different ways to sort of, multiple ways of doing pedagogy. Um, even, um, even ways that were unfamiliar to me. Um, so this was, this was sort of part of, COIL was sort of part of of how I sort of valued myself as a, a professor. So it was a natural sort of extension of, of, of how I sort of see the classroom, how I see students. So it was, it, while it was sort of consistent in the way that I, I want to kind of stand in front of the room, um, it taught me also more sort of pragmatic stuff like, um, flexibility and um, uh, the challenges and wonderful gifts when we need to figure out how to communicate with each other. So there were some students in my in our class in in Sonora that spoke very little English um, and absolutely to see it as a challenge, but also see it as an opportunity for um, myself and my students to learn and develop skills also. Yeah, so learned a lot, learned that um, I could 
um, sort of utilize sort of technology more also <laughs> and be comfortable with it with your with your help of course Keith <laughs> um, so it was really great <laughs> good so Crystal you mentioned you know an example of a challenge being uh, the language of some of the students mm -hmm. um, are there other challenges that might be useful to talk about and and if so um, were you able to resolve them um, and how did you do that <clears throat> yeah um Another thing that I think I would do differently is that the the students ended up being very happy afterward, but the students in my class didn't know that it was going to be a coil class, and they weren't necessarily so thrilled about that. And then they similarly similarly had sort of reservations about coiling with students not in the same discipline. Um, so I think in the future, that would sort of be something that would be flagged to let students know that this is a, um, a COIL class. Um, there, there was, uh, so most sort of COIL classes, there's some sort of COIL, there's some collaboration going on. Um, and sometimes, and we were kind of lucky because it was just a three, three hour time difference, um, but there was some out of class group work that was necessary for students to complete their projects. Um, and so nighttime in the US um, means a different nighttime sometime, it means a different nighttime in Mexico. And I don't know, if, I don't know if you know this, but students sometimes start working at two o'clock in the morning. So that became kind of a challenge for students to meet together to do group work because of the time difference. Um, those are the those are the two challenges that I can think of now. Um, but something might else might come up a, a little bit later. That sounds good. Uh, I guess. Um since you have this coil experience, what advice would you give to other faculty who are interested in, uh, or just starting to think about coil? Yeah, I, I would say, um, I, I really would say really take the opportunity to do it. Um, it is a lot of work, it's a lot of training, but it was, it was, it was also kind of really fun. You know, I met a lot of, I, I met a lot of people, had the opportunity to travel. My, the, my partner had the opportunity to visit me. I had the opportunity to visit uh, my partner's university um, through the training. And then also sort of the cherry on top for me, the, 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 the most, um, the most special moment was that two students in my class were able to visit students in Mexico and then three students in uh, the class in Sonora were able to visit my class. Um, and so it, it was it was fulfilling in that way um, where all of the training was was worthwhile. Um, and on top of that, I just see it as a necessity for contemporary pedagogy um, to not sort of be siloed. And, and, I, and, and in particular, not only siloed in our discipline, but sort of siloed um, having the, I don't know if this is a word, but sort of siloed in this sort of Western framework that I think um, is problematic, um, but easy to do, easy to become siloed in sort of this Western framework of knowledge, of knowledge production. Um, and COIL, I think, um, in essence, sort of problematizes that, sort of sees knowledge production in sort of various facets of the world and that students, need to know this, should know this. So 
I feel like it's a necessity actually for pedagogy. This is the direction that pedagogy and, um, and learning should, this is the direction that it should be going in. Before we finish up, Crystal, I know you, or maybe you and your partner presented on some of the aspects of your class. So uh, maybe we could also squeeze in, um, are there any things about scholarship uh, around COIL that you might wanna mention? Yeah, so um, my partner and I presented, and please help me out with the acronym. <laughs> uh, we presented our work at a conference, I think that following year, it was a SUNY, a SUNY te technological conference. And my partner, I don't, I don't know at the time if there was Zoom, but the, the, the <laughs> Skyped in or something, and we gave a sort of formal group presentation. And then I also presented COIL at one of my, the conferences that I typically go to, which is the, it's a division, uh, American Psychological Association, Division Nine, which is the Society for the Psychological Study of Social Issues. So I uh, presented um, what I did at COIL as a important sort of pedagogical, um, opportunity. And I, I, ha I had a lot, I remember a lot of um, good feedback, a lot of questions. And I remember, I can't remember where the professor was, but another professor from another institution, we actually had a, a phone conversation about COIL and that professor wanting to do something like that at, at their institution. Um, I've also written a chapter about um, COIL, about a, a COIL opportunity. Um, and, um, and have, while not sort of doing it formally in my cross-cultural psychology class at the moment, um, still sort of utilize many of the values, um, that I learned, um, participating in COIL in my cross-cultural psychology class. Excellent, Crystal, thank you so much. And so our last question is, how would you sum up COIL in three words? <laughs> I got this question, I, I, I don't think I can do it in three words. Well, I'll try. I thought this is the question I thought the most about was the hardest one. Um, real, so let me try. Rewarding, um, fun, uh, and student-centered, <laughs> that's four-ish, four with a dash. <laughs> yeah, totally. That, that's great. Well, thanks again, Crystal, for joining us uh, and talking about your experiences. And, um, I, you know, I remember going through uh, the professional development opportunities with you. It was, a, it was a great crowd that we had when we were- It working. was. It was really great. It was really wonderful. I, you know, I, it, I said to myself, I, you know, um, how come I didn't learn about this before? And um, I felt like we were doing really good work for our students and that it was like, it, and it was totally fun. <laughs> well, thanks again, Crystal. Um, appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thanks, Crystal, so much.